hey, this is Warren Redlick. I'm updating my model for valuing Tesla based on how many batteries it produces, how much revenue that will lead to, and the total valuation and Tesla stock price going forward. My bear case now for Tesla in 2030 is over $8,000 a share. That's if things don't go well. Tesla should reach $8,000 a share. This is based on what Elon Musk, Drew Baglino, Zach Kirkhorn, and Jerome Guillen from Tesla all said at the quarter four investor call. That's the bear case, though. The bull case is much bigger. Are you ready? Let's go. During the investor call, Elon talked about two different ways of valuing Tesla. First, he talked about using full self-driving and a ballpark napkin math sense of what revenue would be without full self-driving, adding full self-driving as profit, and then taking that with a price earnings ratio to a valuation. Before I go further, I wanna thank the Vasa Law Firm in Sweden and all my other Patreon supporters for helping this channel grow. Patreon supporters get early access to some content and they get t-shirt discounts and some other benefits. Speaking of t-shirts, I'm wearing the Elon Be Less Wrong t-shirt. Please check out links below for Patreon and for the t-shirts. Here's Elon talking about how to use napkin math to value Tesla. How does one justify the, the value of the company? And I think there is a way, just with back of the envelope math, to potentially justify it. If Tesla ships, let's say, hypothetically, um, 50 or $60 billion worth of vehicles, and those vehicles become full self-driving and can be used in a robo-taxi, uh, uses robo-taxis, their utility uh, increases from an average of 12 hours a week to potentially an average of 60 hours a week. So that's like roughly a 5x uh, increase in utility. Say like, okay, well, let's just assume that the car becomes twice as useful. That would be a, a doubling again of the revenue of the company, um, which is you know almost entirely gross margin. It would be like, okay, if you made $50 million, $50 billion worth of cars, it would be like having $50 billion of incremental profit, basically. For the case, then, yeah, if you do 20 PE on that, it's like a trillion dollars. Respectively, some number of investors are taking that approach. So I have been modeling Tesla's growth and Tesla's valuation in ways similar to what he said. But based on what he said here and some other things that were said in the quarter four call, I've updated one of my models, what I call the battery revenue model. And he did hint at the battery revenue model at another point in the quarter four investor call. Probably the board brushstroke value of Tesla is just what's the sell output that implies vehicle output, and then at least double that for autonomy autonomy revenue, probably more than double. And that that's how you figure out the value of the company, I think, long term. I don't think that could have been more clear that Elon was talking about something like the battery revenue model that I have been talking about and that I will show you more here in this video. So some important details to look at, and we're going to look at the year 2022. The basic question starts with this. How many batteries will Tesla produce in 2022? But it doesn't stop with how many batteries Tesla will produce. Let's start with batteries they'll produce, and we're going to move on in a second. Meanwhile, we've developed enough engineering confidence with our 4680 design and the production process and equipment to kick off manufacturing equipment and facility construction to support our 100 gigawatt hour 2022 goal. The number to think about to focus on is like we have, we've got a 100 gigawatt hour total Tesla cells produced in 2022. It's not that important to look at the, the run up to that because the, the, these things tend to improve exponentially, but we are installing capacity for in 2022 for 200 gigawatt hours a year. And we think probably we should be able to achieve 50% of targeted design capacity in 2022. Yeah, agreed, Elon. And as you've said before, with the S-curve of production, you can be off a little bit on the initial part of the S-curve and that makes a difference in absolute capacity by quite a bit one month to the next. Yeah, I mean, we're, we are progressing up that S-curve as fast as we possibly can. Yeah, and we, and we don't see any showstoppers. So that's our start for 2022, the year we're modeling in this video. 100 gigawatt hours that Tesla is going to produce in 2022. Elon said it, Drew backed him up. 200 gigawatt hours of production capacity. They should achieve 50% production of that or 100 gigawatt hours in 2022. But it's not just Tesla's production. 
Tesla also buys battery cells from its suppliers, from Panasonic, from CATL, and LG Chem. What does this mean for them? And the key here is what we're going to do is we're going to add their production to Tesla's production to figure out in our model how many battery cells Tesla will be using. So listen to what Elon says about the suppliers. But the reason Tesla is doing its own cell production is in order to accelerate the growth. Um, it is not, it is not to, to make less use of our cell suppliers. In fact, I want to be really clear, Tesla wants to increase purchases from cell suppliers. And we've been very clear with our cell suppliers, uh, you know, whether it be CATL or Panasonic or uh, LG, that we will take as many batteries as they can produce. So, and we, we urge them to increase their uh, production and we will buy as much as they can send to us. Now, obviously, that there's some price limits on that because the car still needs to be affordable. It, it, I'm just trying to be as clear as possible that our goal with uh, making our own cells is not to uh, disintermediate our suppliers, it is to supplement our suppliers. And we want our suppliers of cells to increase their production and in addition have our production that is simply taking up the amount beyond which they are um, either unable or unwilling to increase their production. It's an acceleration over and above what the most that our suppliers say they can produce for us. There's two keys from that. Number one, suppliers will be increasing the number of cells that they sell to Tesla. And number two, Tesla's production will supplement what is supplied to them by their suppliers. Elon's use of that word, you know, sometimes maybe he's not careful with his words. I'm not sure if this is what he meant, but it sounded to me like he expects the suppliers to supply more battery cells to Tesla, more gigawatt hours of cells to Tesla than Tesla produces itself. So if Tesla is going to produce 100 gigawatt hours of batteries for its own use in 2022, the expectation is that the suppliers will be supplying more than 100 gigawatt hours of battery cells to Tesla in 2022. So we would be looking at a total of at least 200 gigawatt hours of battery cells that Tesla will run through and put in products and generate revenue from in the year 2022. And that's how this model is going to start. In an earlier video, I started the battery revenue model with the idea of figuring out how many batteries Tesla would have, starting with that number. Here for 2022, I had used 200 gigawatt hours, which is where we're gonna start with when we start the new model. And then distributing that across all the different products that Tesla has or will have in 22 or in the near future after that. So in this particular model, I left the Tesla compact out because that's not supposed to come till 2023. And you can see, let's say 25,000 semis, 750,000 Model 3s. You can see roughly how many in the first column is the name of the vehicle or the product. The second column is the number of units they might make. The third column is how many kilowatt hours per unit. You can see I had 1,000 kilowatt hours for a semi it now looks like semi is gonna have a 500 kilowatt hour pack. So I would need to update that if I went with this model. You see the total number of gigawatt hours that each product uses and you follow that down to the bottom and you get to the total gigawatt hours we were shooting for 200 gigawatt hours. The next column is the average price per unit. And then how much that adds up to when you multiply that many units times that much dollars per unit and you get a revenue number in billions. The last column, shows revenue per kilowatt hour. And for most of Tesla's products, it's somewhere in the ballpark of $600 per kilowatt hour or $700 per kilowatt hour. Semi is lower because it's very expensive. As Elon said, it uses five times as many batteries, but only costs twice as much. Roadster is higher because even though it has a larger battery pack, it has a much larger price. And then Powerwall, Powerpack, and Megapack end up generating a bit less revenue per kilowatt hour Although when you tie Powerwall in with solar, it comes a lot closer to being the same and maybe even more. And Megapack and Powerpack may generate revenue in other ways using AutoBidder. So you could say as a ballpark number that the average Tesla product generates about $600 in revenue per kilowatt hour. That's going to lead us in to the new model.
And notice here with this model, we ended up with $120 billion in revenue for 2022. Not on purpose. That's what we're going to end up with in the new model. Ready? So this is the new model and I take a different approach. Instead of counting every product and adding up the revenue from every product and trying to guess how much of each product we're going to use, I use the Model 3 as a proxy, the standard range Model 3 with an imaginary 50 kilowatt hour pack. I think technically standard range Model 3 now has a 54 kilowatt hour pack, but we're using 50 because it's a nice easy number. So look at the first row. The first row is the year 2022. And you can see on the far left column, a total of 200 gigawatt hours of batteries. This is assuming that Tesla produces the 100 gigawatt hours they say, and they only get 100 gigawatt hours of batteries from suppliers. This is less than what Elon said they were shooting for. If you believe that supplement means that the suppliers supply more than 100 gigawatt hours of batteries. If you use 50 kilowatt hour packs, Model 3s with 50 kilowatt hour packs as a proxy for all of Tesla's products, you come up with 4 million 50 kilowatt hour packs out of 200 gigawatt hours. 20 50 kilowatt hour packs is a megawatt hour. 20,000 50 kilowatt hour packs is a gigawatt hour. Multiply by 100 and you get 2 million. Multiply 200, you get 4 million. So you get 4 million 50 kilowatt hour packs. The next column says revenue at $30,000 a pack. This is assuming an imaginary 50 kilowatt hour Model 3 it's $30,000 in revenue. This is low. The average selling price for Model 3 and Y is around $50,000. The average Model 3 and Model Y has a bigger pack than 50 kilowatt hours, but even for a 50 kilowatt hour pack, $30,000 is low, at least right now. It may be that as, it's likely that as Tesla goes on, products that have 50 kilowatt hour packs will come down in price because the cost of the batteries is coming down. And because Tesla is gonna be producing more of them, and because Tesla is driving to lower the cost of its products to make them more affordable so people can afford to buy Tesla's products. So this is a rough number, $30,000 for a 50 kilowatt hour pack. And you can see in 2022, again, the first row in that column that's labeled revenue, $120 billion in revenue. I oversimplified everything. I took that really complicated model that we had before and I massively simplified it to say, let's just assume they're all Model 3s and we came up with the exact same revenue number that we would have come up with if we had done that much more complicated model. So one of the keys to modeling things is to go as simple as you can. And it appears at least for now, this simplicity works. The next column is Tesla's market cap, market capitalization, the value of the company in billions of dollars at a price to sales ratio of eight. That is the price to sales ratio of Apple. It seems like a fair number to use the same price to sales ratio as Apple. I actually think it's conservative because Tesla is going to be growing faster over this period than Apple is now. So that's market cap in billions, and it's roughly the same as the Tesla share price. So you can see in 2022, in the first column where we're just looking at revenue and we're leaving out, just to be clear, in this column, we're leaving out the FSD that Elon talked about. So without FSD, with, no S with zero FSD revenue, you're just getting $30,000 for that Model 3, or you're getting the equivalent amount for a Powerwall, Megapack, whatever. With no added juice from FSD, you get a market cap of $960 billion and a share price of $960 a share in 2022. But Tesla already makes money from FSD. If you take Elon's approach and you say by 2022, FSD is going to be working and increase the value of the vehicle substantially. And Tesla will, instead of charging $10,000 a vehicle, be charging $30,000 a vehicle. And everyone will buy it because it's amazing. Maybe pushing it, but let's go with that. You add another $30,000 in revenue and it's all profit. And we're going to say that's the only profit. We're actually understating again here because there's some profit on the $30,000 vehicle that we're leaving out when we count this. So we're saying... Tesla has $120 billion of profit because that FSD revenue is 100. That FSD revenue is all margin and it's $120 billion. And the last column right here, market cap in billions of dollars at a price earnings ratio of 30. Now I'm going higher than Elon. Elon suggested the price earnings ratio should only be 20 or that he was using 20. 20 is an absurdly low price earnings ratio for a company that's growing at 50% or more a year. Apple is growing at about 7% a year. 
and it has a price earnings ratio of around 40. Tesla's price earnings ratio should be significantly higher than 20 for this particular approach. We're gonna have a more optimistic one later. For this particular approach, we're going with just a price earnings ratio of 30. And you can see here that the market capitalization in billions of dollars at a price earnings ratio of 30 is $3.6 trillion. And again, that roughly corresponds to the share price, a share price of $3,600 a share in 2022. Right now we're under $900 a share. This is a 4X in the share price in a year, and probably the end of 2022. So let's say it's two years. We're going to 4X the share price in two years in this moderate model. Now, the rest of this model, the, the remaining rows going down are, if you look on the left column, they're the years going forward. And it assumes up at the top, you can see 60% growth. Elon and Zach and Drew all talked about having growth that was more than 50% growth a year. So they didn't say how much more. I suspect it's going to be a lot more growth in the next couple of years and that it's going to slow down a little bit. But to simplify again, models are all about simplification. Let's assume 60% growth. And you can see that in the second column in the year 2023, instead of 200 gigawatt hours, it's 320 gigawatt hours because 60% of 200 is 120 and 200 plus 120 is 320. And you go down the list and you can see down to 2030, it's 8.6 terawatt hours of batteries. Elon had talked about a total of 20 terawatt hours for the, the whole world. And they talked about Tesla producing three terawatt hours in 2030. Elon did say he thought they might get to three terawatt hours before 2030. This model gets them to three terawatt hours right in between 2029 and 2030. You can see 2029 is under six terawatt hours, which means Tesla is not quite producing three terawatt hours of the high nickel cells in 2029 in the model. You can take that across to the next column. You see how many 50 kilowatt hour packs. You see how much revenue at $30,000 a pack. You see what the market cap is leaving FSD out. You see what the profit is adding FSD in, full self-driving in. And the last column is market cap with FSD profits and that price earnings ratio of 30. And you go out to say 2026 and it's 1.3 terawatt hours total, 650 gigawatt hours from Tesla, 650 from suppliers. It's 26 million 50 kilowatt hour packs. Now in theory, that's 26 million Model 3s, but of course Tesla's making 3s, Ys, by this time, they're making a large volume of the Tesla Compact. They're probably making electric vans. They're making a huge volume of power walls, mega packs, all kinds of products. And the power walls and maybe some of the power packs and mega packs are tied in with solar. And all this leads to revenue, again, at that $30,000 a pack level of $786 billion in revenue. With a price to sales ratio of eight, you get $6 trillion in market cap or a $6,000 share price in 2022. You take it to a greater extreme and you say, let's assume that they're getting that $30,000 in profit from FSD and the next column, and you get $786 billion in profit in 2026. And the market cap in 2026 ends up being 23 or $24 trillion. And your Tesla stock is now a $23,000 share. Your current $860 share of Tesla $890, $900 share of Tesla is now up to $23,000 or $24,000 a share. And that's only 2026. And that's with only a PE ratio of 30. That's with no extra profit from the vehicles. Take it out to 2030. Take it out to 2030. And you're up to that 3.6 terawatt hours, which I don't think is crazy given what they talked about at Battery Day. You're talking about 172 million 50 kilowatt hour packs. You're not really making 172 million Model 3s, making a wide variety of vehicles, a wide variety of grid storage. Who knows what else they're doing with all these batteries. Revenue is now $5 trillion, $5.1, $5 $5.2 trillion. Market cap, price to sales ratio of eight, works out to $41 trillion, and your Tesla shares are worth $41,000. If you go with the profit story of FSD, now you've got $5 trillion in profit, a price earnings ratio of 30, and Tesla has a market cap of $154 trillion. And your Tesla shares are worth $154,000, $155,000 a share. Those numbers sound crazy to a lot of people. And when I do these models, people say, well, it can't possibly get that high. So what I did in the last row was I said, okay, 
let's say there's some other factors out there that I haven't accounted for, that I haven't thought of, and you can come up with all these different factors. I haven't really found many of these factors persuasive, these arguments that people make with me, but let's cut the numbers in half for 2030. Let's say in 2030, government's come and gotten in the way, taxes, some other problems, whatever it is, there's all kinds of problems in place. The market isn't big enough to handle all these batteries. There's competitions appeared, whatever you want to call it. Something has happened that has led to a reduction in the numbers somewhere. And we cut the numbers in half. So in 2030, in the without the FSD profit version, just on revenue alone, Tesla is a $20 trillion company and your shares are worth $20,000 a share. If you include FSD profit, Tesla is a $77 trillion company and your shares are worth $77,000. And this is really the base case. This is what Elon is saying with what I think is probably less revenue and profit than it might generate and with a lower PE ratio than makes sense when you look at companies today and what their PE ratios are. Next, we're going to look at the bear case. What would be a bad scenario? What would happen if Tesla did not achieve what Elon, Drew, and Zach are saying they're going to achieve and they came in at a smaller number. They didn't manage to produce as much as they said in 2022. The growth rate is lower and the price earnings ratio is lower. Let's see what that does. On the left side, you can see the years again. And the second column, you can see total gigawatt hours. And you can see total gigawatt hours on 150. So I've reduced the total gigawatt hours from the 100 gigawatt hours of batteries produced by Tesla and 100 gigawatt hours from suppliers to 150, maybe 75 a piece, or maybe Tesla produces the 100 and the suppliers only make 50 or vice versa. So they come in below what Elon, Zach, and Drew were saying in 2022. This means instead of 4 million 50 kilowatt hour packs, they produce 3 million 50 kilowatt hour packs. The revenue at $30,000 a pack works out to $90 billion, $90 billion, which is almost triple revenue for 2020. So that's pretty good. The market cap in billions of dollars, if you limit them to a price sales ratio of eight, is $720 a share. If you go with FSD, in other words, you include the FST and you lower the value of the FST to $20 a pack instead of $30 a pack. Because we're trying to do this bear case. We're trying to say, all right, it doesn't come in as good as Elon is saying. Now, first of all, you can say no FST at all and go with the $720, the $720 billion number or $720 a share. If you want to incorporate FST in the bear case, then it's $60 billion in profit. And you, on the last column over here, we've reduced the price earnings ratio to the 20 that Elon mentioned. Here we've got it growing at 40% a year instead of what Elon, Drew, and Zach are saying of more than 50% a year. So this is a massive bear case compared to what they're saying they're going to do. A PE ratio of 20 is still really low for a company growing at 40% a year, but we're going to go with that for this bear case. You still end up with a $1.2 trillion market cap and a $1,200 share price in 2022. Now let's look in 2026, because of the slower growth, we only have 576 gigawatt hours produced in 2026, much less than we saw in the previous model because it's only growing at 40% from a lower number. Start, it starts with a lower number, 150. It only grows at 40%. So we only get to 576 gigawatt hours in 2026. That's 11.5 million 50 kilowatt hour packs, the equivalent of 11.5 million Model 3s and Model Ys standard range. If Tesla only gets $30,000 in revenue for each of those vehicles or packs, you end up with $346 billion in revenue, which is about 10x revenue for Tesla in 2020. The market cap at a price to sales ratio of eight works out to $2.8 trillion or a $2,800 a share price for Tesla stock. Adding in the profit at $20,000 a pack, you end up with $230 billion in profit. With a price earnings ratio of 20, you end up with $4.6 trillion in market cap and a share price of $4,600 a share in 2026. Your $900 or so Tesla stock has gone 5X in five years. This is the bear case. This is the bear case for what's going to happen to your Tesla stock. That it's gonna go to triple or 5X what it's currently worth in five years, right? This is massively underperforming what Elon, Drew, Zach, and Jerome say they're going to accomplish. And if you go out to 2030, again, we're at the bare case, a total of 2.2 terawatt hours of battery packs. 
1.1 terawatt hours from Tesla falling way short of their goal of three terawatt hours in 2030 and 1.1 terawatt hours from suppliers or some balance therein, but still far short of the three terawatt hours that they talked about at battery day and far short of the six terawatt hours that it would be if it's Tesla's three terawatt hours plus three terawatt hours from suppliers or more. In this model, we see 44 million 50 kilowatt hour packs in 2030, the equivalent of 44 million Model 3s and Model Ys spread across a variety of products. Revenue reaches $1.3 trillion in 2030. The market cap at a price sales ratio of eight, $10 trillion, and your Tesla stock is worth over $10,000 a share. You've gone more than 10X in nine years. If you take the profit at $20,000 a pack, you get $885 billion in profit, price earnings ratio of 20, you get a 17 or $18 trillion company, and your stock is worth $17,000 or $18,000. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the previous model and say, you know what? There might be some other things out there that are gonna hold this back. But instead of cutting it in half, I'm gonna say, let's take 80% of the number. Because we haven't pushed up against as many barriers as we would have if we were growing 60% a year and got to much bigger numbers. So that's the red row here, red boxes here. We're just discounting, taking 20% off because some of the people watching are conservative and say there's no way it could grow that big. Fine. $8.5 trillion market cap in 2030 with no FSD profit and an $8,500 share price or with FSD, a $14 trillion market cap and a $14,000 share price in 2030. This is the bear case. This is the, if things go wrong, if they massively underperform what they said, your stock is going to go like crazy 10x or 15x where it is in nine years. That's the bad story. Now, let's take a look at the fun story. This is where we get optimistic, and I don't think this is really crazy optimism. Up at the top, you can see I'm talking about 250 gigawatt hours in 2022. This is consistent with what Elon and Drew talked about, that Tesla produces 100 gigawatt hours of batteries that supplements what comes from suppliers. They're supplying more than 100 gigawatt hours. Let's call it 150 for this number, for this model. That works out to 5 million packs in 2022. And now I went optimistic and I said, let's say it's $40,000 a pack in revenue. In other words, a standard range Model 3 sells for $40,000, which is the rough revenue from most people's purchases of a Model 3. It's around $40,000. That's the ballpark of what a four, uh, that's the ballpark of what a Model 3 returns or a Model 3 Model Y with a 50 kilowatt hour pack returns. That's $200 billion in revenue or roughly 6x the 2020 revenue. 6x in two years. At a price to sales ratio of eight, you've got a market cap of 1.6 trillion and a share price of $1,600 a share. And we're doing the profit. My, my chart is wrong. This is at $40,000 profit per pack, $40,000 in profit per vehicle because of FSD. Remember, Elon said it should be double. It really should be more than double. So we're calling it double. We're not giving it the more than double. So in some ways, we're still being conservative where you could go with a bull optimist case. You end up with $200 billion in profit with a price earnings ratio of 40 you end up with an $8 trillion market cap or an $8,000 share price. That your stock is up 10x in about two years. 8x, 9x in about two years. Remember, this is the optimist case. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I don't think these numbers are crazy. Which of these numbers is crazy? 250 gigawatt hours? They said they're going to do something in that ballpark. 5 million vehicles? You know, with 5 million vehicles, products, including power walls and mega packs, it's not crazy. The $40,000 for a Model 3, it's not crazy. The profit, if FSD hits, if FSD hits and people are willing to pay $40,000 and it's going to go out and it's going to make them money, it's going to go out and operate as RoboTaxi and make the owner money, or Tesla's going to operate it itself, which is another model I'm not going to get into here. None of this is crazy. An $8 trillion market cap and an $8,000 share price in 2022. It's an optimist version, but it's really not that crazy. Moving down the chart, moving down this table, we're going to the 60% growth, that the, the greater than 50% growth that Elon and Drew and Zach were talking about in the investor call. So 60% added to 250 in 2023 gets you to 400 gigawatt hours. You go out to 2026, we're going to look at 2026 again. We've got 
1.6 terawatt hours, 1600 gigawatt hours of batteries produced and purchased from suppliers. That leads to 33 million packs, the equivalent of 33 million Model 3s and Model Y standard range. Again, spread over all kinds of products. We get $1.3 trillion in revenue and a $10 trillion market cap with a $10,000 share price, not counting FSD profits. Last two columns, we add an FSD profits. We get profit of 1300 We get profit of $1.3 trillion. We get a market cap of $52 trillion and a share price of $52,000 a share in 2026, five years from now. $50,000 a share, five years from now. Sounds crazy, but this is straightforward from the numbers we've been talking about. And we'll take it out to 2030 where the numbers go over the top batshit crazy. 10 terawatt hours. Now, look, Elon said we're going to go for three terawatt hours in 2030 and we think we can get there sooner. This number gets them to three terawatt hours in roughly 2029, like he said they were going to try to do. And if they get the same amount of batteries from their suppliers, and in 2030, they hit 10.7 terawatt hours, 10,700 gigawatt hours of batteries. They produce 204, the equivalent of 214 million 50 kilowatt hour packs. The revenue at $40,000 a pack works out to $8.6 trillion. And the market cap shoots up to $69 trillion. And your share price is $69,000 a share. Moving over, adding profit in from FSD. Maybe it's auto bid or whatever it is. You're adding all this extra profit in from all this margin you're getting. You get $8.6 trillion in profit. Price earnings ratio 40. It's a $343 trillion company in market cap. And your shares are worth $343,000 each or $344,000 each. Now, again, I did the red box as I said. Something happens that constrains Tesla's growth in some way that it can't possibly achieve these numbers. So let's cut them in half. So without FSD profits, it's only a $34,000 share price. With FSD profits, it's only a $172,000 share price. That's where the model takes us. So that's it. That's the update of the battery revenue model. If you're a bear and you think Tesla can't possibly make the 200 gigawatt hours that we're talking about, 100 gigawatt hours produced, 100 gigawatt hours from suppliers, they're not going to achieve the 50% plus growth, they're only going to achieve 40% growth. You're going to see a Tesla share price of at least $8,500 a share in 2030, $14,000 with FSD profits. And if you're an optimist, the numbers just go nuts. You're talking about $200,000, $300,000 a share. I know it sounds crazy. That's where the model leads us. So in the comments below, you think I'm crazy, please explain what the constraints are. Keep in mind, I cut the numbers in half to get that $172,000 a share. So you tell me what amazingly big problem comes up that keeps this from growing as big as it gets. And don't just tell me, well, that would be bigger than GDP because number one, you don't know what GDP is going to be. And number two, GDP is the wrong number. Market cap is not related to GDP. It's related to wealth. GDP is income, not wealth. So as usual, please check out my other videos, subscribe to the channel, support this channel on Patreon, buy the t-shirts, be less wrong. Check out the t-shirts in the description below. And thank you so much for watching.